This story may have been told before, but this is our version, our reality. We're inviting you to join us for a day of our lives living on a 28 foot sailboat. First challenge is always finding somewhere to put the dinghy, but it seems like there's a few good options here. I think the most interesting thing for us is that we always move forward to new places. We rarely kind of go back to the same places, so it's the first time we've seen this place. So you have no idea what it's going to be like. We're kind of somewhere completely different and we don't know what we're going to go and find. shape <laughs> wow so I think this is also what's really a really cool challenge about the lifestyle is that even just to kind of go to the shops or just go and have an explore of a new town you're always doing it on foot there are some absolutely yep. amazing parts of this lifestyle which I think so many people absolutely love but at the costs of practicalities, comforts. I don't know if absolutely everyone could do it or even if it should be for everyone. I think especially if you're doing this on a budget like we are, there's always gonna to need to be some compromise. Back in Birmingham, if you'd have ever told me I would find going to a shop even remotely interesting, I would avoid shopping every chance I could get. And now like we genuinely, it's so exciting, especially if we haven't been to Shore in a while, um, knowing that we're gonna go and do these little silly you know chores of like laundry and shopping and I actually really like going to shore to do these things it means you're going to be exploring somewhere new and um yeah it's just it's just it's a reminder of how simple i think this life is as well obviously when you're somewhere like this that's very built up very touristy the compromises are much less than if you were somewhere a bit more remote we've got all the conveniences we would ever need here but it still slightly differs to being back in Birmingham or having the conveniences of cars and shops on your doorsteps and things like that. But some things are the same. This was like my favourite chocolate back at home. It's a vegan marzipan chocolate, so I'm treating myself to this. <laughs> but probably the key difference between how we shop now. <laughs> compared to how we used to shop is we have to carry it all a very long way, so we don't buy too much. One of the best things about living on a sailboat is that you can anchor for free in some amazing places and cities all around the world. Not only does this help you live cheaply, but it's a great way to escape the hustle and bustle and head back to your quiet, tranquil little home. It's hot. I think I'm going back in the water. I'm going for another swim. Might join you. Yeah, two swims in one day.
So this should be about done. So we've just got some peppers and I'm just going to stuff them with this um, banana skin, barbecue banana skin we made earlier. Oh, I'm looking forward um, to seeing and that. Just a little salad, really plain bean salad. <laughs> So we've also just put in some bananas for pudding. Uh, we've just sprinkled them with cinnamon and sugar. Um, so we'll just leave those to grill for a little bit. Drizzle your lovely cinnamony, sugary bananas with a bit of amaretto. Oh yeah, a bit. <laughs> Tell them what happened. I was just washing up. <laughs> I was just washing up and uh, I saw this dinghy floating past, not attached to anything. So I just thought I'd jump out, jump off the boat and go grab it. And then yeah, pulled it back. Maybe it's very fine to as it is. Yeah, uh, there's a catamaran just in front. I don't know if it would be there, but I'm gonna put my fins on, put my mask on, try and stay visible because there is boats going backwards and forwards. Um, and yeah, just go and ask them, see if it's their dinghy, see if they've lost one. Ah, uh, he's a nice guy, wasn't he? Yeah, he seemed a bit shell shocked. Yeah. He, he was like, Is, have I lost a dinghy? And then he like looked around the boat, he was like, have you got my dinghy? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I think we've got your dinghy. That's so sweet. The guy who just came back and bought us his bottle of wine. <laughs> How sweet is that? It's amazing. Oh. So the second thing that takes probably most of our free time, aside from generally larking about, going for a swim, walking, is editing. And that's what I'm going to do now. We've had a lovely day exploring, and now I'm going to come in out the sun and just edit a video for a little while. So we absolutely love documenting our adventures for you guys. and. Um, editing them is personally my favourite part of it. Bryn loves the filming more so and I absolutely love the editing so this is going to take a few hours tonight and I'm just going to crack on with this. Uh, not sure what Bryn's plans are today. Well one of the things obviously is living on a boat we have limited resources so whilst Jade's editing I'm just going to quickly monitor, check the batteries make sure we have enough power make sure there's enough solar coming in so that we aren't going to drain our house batteries too much which to be honest rarely happens. But another thing is we're pretty much controlled by the weather so if there's a bad weather front coming in the best thing we can do is find the best shelter so to do that we mostly just use a phone so the apps that i use are predictwind this is just for weather mostly so basically i just check out where the wind's coming from how bad it's going to be and also i'll see what the sea state or what the sea conditions also going to be like so I'll probably spend, I don't know, 20 minutes, half an hour checking the weather and I'll check it against other apps as well, such as Windy. And then another thing that I'll do is I'll monitor the, the boat systems. So I'll use the Victron Connect app and I'll show you that now. So that's our solar and it just shows me how much is coming in and how much our solar has been coming in over the last few days and what it looks like. And we also have like a battery monitor uh, section to it, which is also very cool and it shows us what our voltage is on the house battery and much of the batteries we have left. So I'll be doing route planning because obviously if I feel that we have to move, I then need to look at what are the best days to move and how to keep us essentially safe. So we're pretty much dictated to by the weather. So even though this lifestyle looks like it's so freeing, we still have to abide by keeping safe and making sure that we aren't putting ourselves into certain dangers that are just unnecessary. I think as well, probably something that I hadn't really thought of before I knew about boats and sailing and the weather, is even the places you visit sometimes are dictated by the weather. So, for example, the only reason we've spent more than probably one day here is because it's the most protected anchorage from the weather direction, from the wind direction. Yeah. Ordinarily, if the wind was in our favour, I think we only would have stayed here for one, maybe two days. Um, and that's the really interesting thing, kind of, we do travel with the wind. Where the where the wind wants us to go generally is where we travel, um, unless we're going to motor, which we also do sometimes if we're impatient and want to go somewhere. <laughs> it's not quite as free and 
worry free as it might seem sometimes because you know we are always really conscious as well as i'm being as well being on a small boat especially we are more conscious of just making sure we go out in appropriate conditions really for our boat and our own fear <laughs> <laughs> a perfect analogy of why we move sometimes quick and why we move sometimes slow why we hang out in places longer and shorter it's mostly down to weather and also especially with the Schengen visas now um, after Brexit it's made it a little bit well it has made it more tricky to be able to spend longer in places so we're having to think about not putting ourselves in a dangerous situation trying to cross more seas in a shorter amount of time because our visas are going to run out so we're trying to do everything as safe as possible still and abide by country laws probably the number one kind of area where we budget um, on talisman is food we don't eat out hardly ever and obviously we're also plant-based and we don't have a fridge so we kind of can't really stock up on fresh fruit and veg as it doesn't last very long we have a pretty strict budget uh, each month of around um three to four hundred pounds so if we've spent a bit too much then we won't go and stock up on you know the luxuries and we'll just rely on our tinned goods and dried goods so that's what i'm cooking now it's basically all entirely just tinned food and dried food um, now this would be a lot better with lots of fresh fruit and veg um, you know mushrooms, onions, tomatoes, all that kind of stuff but we don't have any of that so I'll tell you what I'm making uh, cooked up a bit of garlic, some beans and a few spices uh, turmeric, paprika, put in some rice, some veggie stock and now I'm going to just top it with tinned artichoke hearts um, so that's, that's what these are so these are super cheap and we've been able to find these everywhere in Spain the other thing that you can find everywhere in Spain that is delicious is obviously olives. So we're going to top it with some olives as well. Yeah, that's pretty much it. We'll leave it to simmer for about 25 to 30 minutes. It's super simple. So these have just been marinating in lemon juice, olive oil, pepper, chilli um, and garlic. This is way too many, I'm not going to lie, this is way too many artichoke hearts. <laughs> How many olives is too many olives? We do love food, we are surprisingly big foodies. We like to eat different stuff all the time. Italian, Chinese, Thai, whatever, we, we, we like a bit of everything. So um, I guess the challenge for us has been finding food that keeps, food that's accessible in Spain, because obviously um, a lot of things that I cook with in England I can't find out here like the noodles are quite quite sparse so that's um something when we find them we stock up on them if you're interested in any of this in any more detail um you can check out the other video i did where i talk in more in depth about the food that we eat and you might find that interesting but for now i'm gonna let that simmer and cook and we'll be eating in about half an hour or so i don't know what you'd call this i feel like it's kind of like paella-esque maybe i think as well it's so fun because we have so much more free time now obviously than we would have if we were working normal jobs and normal lives and stuff we always just try out new recipes whereas before i think we were so lazy with our cooking but now we actually really really enjoy um trying new things so i'm obviously going to top it with crispy onions because these are amazing <laughs> we're gonna eat now you want to come join us? Sorry, there's not enough for you, but... Come sit at the table with us, guys. We'll finish chatting. It's full of flavour. Nice, isn't it? It's beautiful. Um, mm, the olives go so well. The olives do go well. Mm. We never cook with olives. We usually just eat them from the jar. Mm. <laughs> We've shown you just a day in our life, living on our sailboat in Mallorca today. Yeah. Um, but every day is obviously completely different. You know, we haven't sailed anywhere today tomorrow might look completely different <laughs> um, but that's what we love about the lifestyle i think every day is different so it's not the most perfect lifestyle and it probably def well i'm pretty sure it won't suit absolutely everyone it has so many positives that it suits us so so well and we absolutely love it like jade says days are different yeah. challenges are different and knowing that not each day will always be the same is kind of one of the things that we love most about this lifestyle obviously if anyone had absolutely any budget 
then you get rid of some of the compromises. But living on a boat this small, without all of the creature comforts, is this something that you think you could do? Because if it is, then this is so achievable for so many people. Mm. It's really, really within grasp for almost anyone, we think. So we really hope you've enjoyed this video. Please, any comments, any questions, let us know below. Um, or even just like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video because it will really, really help us out. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much, you guys. You guys are awesome. And we'll see you in the next video. See you soon. Bye. Bye.